Good morning. It is Tuesday morning, and today in Bible, we are going to go back to that verse in Ephesians. So grab your Bible, and let's find Ephesians 1, 7. This will be our verse to learn this week, Ephesians 1, 7. So Ephesians, remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four Gospels. Then after that, we have Acts and Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, then Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So Ephesians is after Galatians. We're in big number one, little number seven. Ephesians 1, 7. And it says, in him, in who? In Jesus. In him, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. See, we can only come to God through Jesus. It took Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for us to be able to go to, to God for our prayers, for our salvation, to trust in him for anything. Because we alone are not good enough. We can't do enough good works. And so the only way that we can get to God is in Jesus. Again, Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. And that is Ephesians 1, 7. Today in Bible, we are going to talk about the first three trials of Jesus. Jesus first went to Annas, then to Caiaphas, or Caiaphas, you can say it either way, and then through the Sanhedrin. These trials are mentioned in our Bible workbook on page 187. We are going to not do a Bible workbook page today, but if you want to open up to page 187, you can read number one, number two, and number three before you watch today's Bible lesson so that you will understand who these three people are. So Annas, number one, Caiaphas number two and the Sanhedrin number three. That's what I want you to read about today. So before you go into today's Bible account, I want you to read those three boxes on page 187. And then we'll start our Bible account and when we come back we'll discuss it a little bit. After celebrating the Passover meal, Jesus led his disciples to the Mount of Olives. All of you will desert me, Jesus told them. For God has declared through the prophets, I will kill the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. But after I'm raised to life again, I will go to Galilee and meet you there. Now Peter said to Jesus, I will never desert you, no matter what the others do. Jesus answered him saying, Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times. No, Peter insisted, not even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. They came to an olive grove called the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him. He told the others to stay where they were while he went and prayed. Jesus began to be filled with deep distress. He told Peter, James, and John that his soul was crushed by sorrow to the point of death. Stay here, he said, watch and pray with me. Jesus went on a little further and fell to the ground and prayed, Father, Father, he pleaded, everything is possible for you. Take away this cup from me, yet I want your will, not mine. Finally, Jesus was led off to the high priest's residence. All the other disciples deserted Jesus and fled. John and Peter, however, followed Jesus. They kept their distance. Peter followed right into the courtyard of the high priest and he sat with the guards warming themselves by the fire. Jesus was taken to Annas, a Jewish religious leader, who asked him about what he taught. 
Jesus explained that he had taught openly in the synagogue and in the temple. He hadn't taught anything in secret. Jesus said that Annas should talk to those who had heard him, heard him teach to be witnesses of what he had said. An officer struck Jesus because he didn't like that answer. Then Annas had Jesus bound and sent him to his son-in-law Caiaphas, the high priest at the time. Some claimed they had heard Jesus say, I will destroy the temple made with human hands, and in three days we'll build another temple not made with hands. Are you not going to answer? The high priest asked Jesus, but Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest asked Jesus, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one, coming down on the clouds of the heavens. After hearing this, the high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? The crowd shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Some began to spit at Jesus. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists and said, prophesy. The guards took him and beat him. While Peter was in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. She looked closely at Peter and said, you were with that Nazarene, Jesus. Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he replied. Later, out by the gate, another girl noticed him and said to those surround, standing around, this man was with Jesus. Again, Peter denied it. This time he said, I don't even know the man. Men who had been standing there came over to Peter and said, we know you were one of his disciples, for we can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter began to get very angry. I don't even know the man, he said, and immediately the rooster crowed. Jesus turned around and looked at Peter and suddenly Peter remembered when Jesus had said earlier, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter went away and cried bitterly. I feel like oftentimes we're kind of like Peter was in this case. You know, we tell God on Sunday, we're going to do better. We're going to do better about listening to mom and dad. We're going to do better about not lying. We're going to do better about sharing our toys. And then the week comes along and we fail miserably. Like we, we don't even have it together. And I feel so many times like maybe I'm just like Peter. You know, Peter stood there that night and said, Lord, I'm not going to deny you. I'm going to follow you, even if it means death. And then within hours later, Peter had already denied Jesus three times, said he didn't even know who that man was. And I, I feel like maybe we need to pray for, um, for our times where we are like Peter, because so many times I feel like I just sometimes mess up. I don't have it all together. So let's go to the Lord and thank him for Jesus' sacrifice and for his forgiveness whenever we mess up as well. Dear Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus to the cross. We thank you for allowing him to endure such a terrible punishment for our sake so that we might be saved, so that we might be children of God, so that we might have fellowship with you. And we want to pray for all of the times where we still disappoint you and let you down, Lord. And we want you to know that we are sorry. And we know that we are forgiven through the cross of Jesus Christ. And if we repent and turn away from our sins, Lord, we can follow closer to you. I pray that as we go through this week, we'll be a shining light for you. 
that you will be shown throughout our neighborhoods, throughout our homes, to all those around us who may not have a relationship with you. Lord, have them ask questions. Have them seek you out at this Easter time. And we ask that none of us would go through this Easter holiday without knowing you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, boys and girls, I've told you before, Easter is a very special time for me because part of my story is that I accepted Christ. I made him Lord of my life at Easter time. Um, and remember, I've told you, I, I didn't really grow up in church like you have all had the opportunity to grow up in. I was not aware of everything Jesus had done until one Easter when I was 15 and I saw what they call a passion play, which tells all about the last days of Jesus and how he suffered and died for my sins and rose again on the third day. And when I was in the middle of seeing that passion play, I felt the tugging on my heart and a heaviness and I felt this burden like, you know, I was, I, I needed Jesus. I had such sin in my life. And, um, and it was at that passion play that I gave my life to Jesus many, many years ago. So Easter is a very special time for me, and I pray that it is a very special time for your family as well. Thank you for doing Bible with me today. I know it wasn't our funnest subject. It's always hard to talk about Jesus going through suffering and trials, but I promise it gets better because we know the rest of the story. I hope you have a great day. See you in a few minutes for reading. For reading today, we are going to finish our story about Phyllis Wheatley, uh, the slave girl from Boston. We are going to start on page 247 and read through to page 251. So 247 to 251. And then I've got some special instructions for you. So right now I want you to take out your reading workbook I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Take out your reading workbook, and we're actually going to tear out two pages. So tear out page 217 and page 219. You'll need them both. Now, on page 217, I want you to read both of the paragraphs about those two men and answer those questions. Then you can also finish page 218, which is the back. Um, it should be really easy. It's about the suffix able and how to use it to change words to adjectives. But the big thing that I want to talk to you about is the next two pages, page 219 and 220. Page 219 and 220 are going to be for a grade. It is going to be something that you don't have to finish today but you need to try to finish by Sunday. It's due Sunday night. Page 219 has some dates in Phyllis Wheatley's life. And so I want you to fill in things that might have happened to Phyllis Wheatley in her life at those times. And if you go back through your story, I think you'll find some good examples. The part that I want to explain to you though is on the back on page 220. On page 220, there are six circles and six boxes. This is going to be a timeline about your life. I want you to pick six important events in your life. It can be the day you were born. It can be the day a sibling was born. It can be a special vacation. It can be the day you accepted Christ. It can be anything that happened, maybe moving to a new area, moving to a new school, anything that might have happened that's important to you. I want you to put them in order from when the first thing happened at the top to when the last thing happened at the bottom. Write your items in those six boxes and when you're finished, I need a picture of the front and the back of this page only, page 219 and 220. This is going to be your reading grade this week. So do your very best work on it. You know what, if you don't remember dates, that's okay because we have mom and dad or grandma and grandpa with us. You can ask them for dates. Ask them, hey, when did we go on that vacation? Or when did I first learn to walk? Or when did I start school? And they will help you remember. So go ahead and work on these pages 
throughout this week. They're not due until Sunday. So today for reading, we're going to read the last pages of Phyllis Wheatley. And we have four little worksheets, front and back, two pages to complete. Now remember, 219 and 220, you can work on all week. That does not have to be done this week. And if it takes you a little longer than Sunday, that's okay too. Just go ahead and take your time and do your very best work. I'll see you in a few minutes for math. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about dividing money. When we are dividing money, I'm looking at problem 1A on your paper. Um, I'm on page 267 for those of you who need to know the page number. I'm looking at 1A. When we are dividing money, the only difference between this problem and a regular division problem is that this number, $21.36, it has a decimal. That's the only difference. And it makes for a really easy change to my problem. Here's what's going to happen. Wherever I have that decimal on the inside, I'm going to just move it straight on up. Look, I'm going to use a different color so you can see straight on up. And I'm going to place it on the top line where I put my answer, that exact same spot. Now, this is why it's so important that our work is neat because some numbers are going to go in front of it and some numbers are going to go behind it. And if you mix those up, then it's going to change your answer a lot. So we're going to get to working that problem in just a minute. But before we get started, let's go back and review the five steps of an, a, a division problem. What is step number one of a division problem? Yes, we are going to divide step number one. Step number two, we are going to multiply. Step number three, we are going to subtract. Then we will compare and bring down if our answer is less than what we're dividing by. So divide, multiply, subtract, compare, bring down. Let's go back and work our problem. I cannot say 2 divided by 6 because if I only have two things, I cannot make a group of 6 with them. Therefore, I'm going to underline the whole number 21. And I'm going to say 21 divided by 6. What is 21 divided by 6? It is 3. My three goes right above the one because it's at the end of my line. Be very careful. This is where it's a little bit tricky. You have to make sure you keep your numbers on the correct side of your decimal point. Step two, three times six is 18. Step three, 21 minus 18 is three. Step four, compare, is three less than six? Yes, it is. So step five, we bring down my next number. Notice I did not bring down a decimal point. I'm done with my decimal point. I only have to write it in my answer. I never again use it. So I don't worry about bringing it with me anywhere. It stays right where it's at. 33 divided by six is five. The five goes right above the number I brought down. Five times six is 30. 33 minus 30 is three. Is three less than six? Absolutely, good job. So I bring down my next number. I have 36. 36 divided by six is six. 6 times 6 is 36, and I'm going to run out of room here. But 36 minus 36 is 0, and I am finished. Now, let's check our work. In order to check our work, we are going to take our answer, 
$3.56. We are going to multiply it times 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Put down your 6, carry your 3, plus 3. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 plus 3 is 33. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. Be careful. These two numbers right now are not the same thing because I see in my problem that two numbers are behind my decimal. That means in my answer, two numbers are behind my decimal. And therefore, my answer is $21.36 here, which matches the $21.36 I started with. So I know that my answer to this problem is correct, $3.56. Go ahead and try the rest of number one on your own. I want to see if you can do the division by yourself. Good luck. Good, I want to go over the answers with you for one, for number one. Let's go over them together. Put your finger on 1B. 1B is $11.57. 1C is $8.23. 1D is $5.98. Take a moment for me, if you will. I want you to read and try to solve on your own 3B. It is a story problem. It deals with different types of measurements. One of them doesn't belong and will need to be changed to fit the problem. Go ahead and try it on your own 3B. Pause me and then come back and we'll work it together. Alright, so if you are back, that means you are ready to go. Um, first, I'm going to start by reading the word problem for us, and then I will work through it here in case you didn't understand it. Here we go. Ava's mother bought three pounds of blueberries and 28 ounces of raspberries. How many ounces of berries did she buy? This story has, or this story problem, has two different types of measurements. What I notice first is that Ava's mother bought three pounds of blueberries. The question says, how many pounds did she buy? So we're adding them together. She also bought 28 ounces of raspberries. Ounces, remember, is OZ, pounds is LB. And we need to know how many ounces did she buy all together. Two of these work. One of these doesn't belong. And we have to ask ourselves which one doesn't belong. Well, if my answer needs to be in ounces, he is in ounces. He does not belong. That means I need to change him to ounces. In order to do that, we go one two, three, from pounds to ounces. Show me with your hands. From pounds to ounces, we multiply. Good job. How many ounces are in a pound? 16. Three times 16 equals 48. How do I know that? I go off on the side of my paper, 16 times three. 3 times 6 is 18. Put down my 8, carry my 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 48. Put 48 in your blank. You may now cross off the pounds because we now belong. We have ounces like everyone else. 48 ounces plus 28 ounces equals blank ounces. 48 plus 28, 8 plus 8 is 16, put down your 6, carry your 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, 
5 plus 2 is 7. The answer to this problem is 76 ounces. Did you get that? Good. Give yourself a pat on the back. I want you to go ahead and finish the rest of your math page for today. When you get done, we will come back and do some drawing. See you in a few. Hadley, what are we going to draw today? A koala. A koala. We hope you're going to follow along with us. We need something to draw with, some paper, and... Some food color with. All right, let's get started. <laughs> we're first going to draw two circles in the middle of our paper. We're going to draw them about this big, and we're going to leave some space in between the two circles. So we can draw a nose in the middle. Yep, and some space and another eye. Perfect. Now let's color in those two circles. All of it. All of it, yeah. Usually we put highlights, but this time I thought it would be fun to leave the highlights off. Now let's draw the nose. We're gonna draw a U shape in between our two eyes. I see you putting eyelashes on. <laughs> and this U shape, look at the bottom. It's a little flat down at the bottom. Yeah, that, that's perfect. Then we're gonna draw a curve on the top to complete the nose. Now let's color in this shape. That's a lot of coloring. So we're gonna fast forward and you guys can pause the video to take time to finish this step. And make sure you have at least two sheets of paper when yeah, you have markers. Definitely, so it doesn't soak through and get on your paper. Yeah. I mean your table. You want it on your paper. Now we're gonna draw our koala's head or the chin. We're gonna start over here and we're gonna draw a U shape that comes underneath and up on the other side. Yeah, now let's draw the ears and we're gonna leave a little space and we're gonna draw a curve that comes out and up. And we'll do the same thing on both sides. Yeah, now let's draw a little zigzag at the top of the ears so they look fuzzy. Okay, now we're ready to draw the rest of the ear and we'll draw a big curve that comes down and connects to the cheek on both sides. It's so cute. I love koalas. They're so fun to watch. Okay, now let's draw the top of his head or her head. We're gonna draw a little curve. It's gonna go halfway over and then stop. We can go a little further. And then we're gonna draw a zigzag. We draw a little bump, then a big bump, and a little bump to finish it. A bump? Yeah, bump. It's little so bumps. Funny. Yeah, oh yeah, and then you connected it. Yeah, they're not really bumps. They're more like spikes, huh? Yes. That's what you were confused about. Now we're gonna con connect over here, which you already did. So let's move on. All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, now we're ready to draw the arms. We're gonna start right here, connect to the chin, come down, back up, and then we're gonna leave a gap right here. We're not gonna connect. Now we're ready to draw the other arm and we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna draw the same shape comes back but goes the other direction. Oh, I love how big your koala is. Now we're gonna draw the feet sticking out to the side. So we're gonna draw a U-shape over here, sideways U-shape, and a sideways U-shape over here on this side. There's the two feet. Yeah, and then in between the two front feet or arms, we can connect, connect them. Yeah, there's his belly. And we're done. We did it. We finished drawing our koala. Now, what do koalas like to eat? What's their favorite leaf? Eucalyptus. Yeah, eucalyptus leaves. Let's draw a few sticks. We're going to draw the sticks coming out first. So there's two lines right next to each other. Good. And then we can connect them at the top. Now we can add, let's add another one over here on this side too. Two sticks, two lines, and then connect them at the top to make the stick complete. And then we can add, let's add another one right here next to it. And then connect that one. And we can even draw some really tall ones coming out of the top. So we're going to draw two lines coming up over here and then connect them at the top. Oh, mine's super yeah, I, huh? I like how long it is. That's great. And then we, we I'm going to add even more. Now, you guys at home can add as many as you want. And uh, let's see. Oh, I'm going to add another one down here, too. All right, good, Hadley. Now we can add the leaves. And eucalyptus leaves are really long. Well, some of them are really long. So let's draw some like long shapes coming off of each of the sticks. Like that. 
I'm gonna add them over here. Now you guys don't have to draw this exactly like us. Oh, oh that's a big one. He's really gonna like that one. It's gonna be super hungry. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be his dinner. And then we're gonna, <laughs> so you guys can add these leaves wherever you want on the little sticks coming out. Good. You can even cover your whole page with eucalyptus branches and leaves, but let's leave it just like this. Now we still need to do one last thing. What is it? Color it. Yeah, we need to color it. Now this part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end you guys can pause it to match the same color. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Now on our koala, we've added some, some extra lines with our gray colored pencil. We added a U shape right here for the bottom of his mouth. We added ovals on the bottom of his feet and we did a zigzag right here between his arms. Now we're gonna leave these little spots white. Let's also draw a little outline on the ears. So first we'll start here, draw a curve that matches the top curve. Yeah, and then let's do a zigzag that matches the outside and then that big curve that comes down. Now we're gonna leave the inside of the ears white. So that's why we're drawing this shape in there first. So we can repeat that same shape over here. So we do, do, draw the top curve, the zigzag, and then the bottom curve. Yeah, we're kinda of copying the, the, outside. the outside. You're right, you're exactly right. Now we're gonna to continue to fast forward, but we're gonna leave the ears, the mouth, the belly, and the ends of the feet white. go ahead and keep coloring. I'm going to show our art friends how to add a little extra shading to our koala. Okay. I'm using a black colored pencil. I'm going to start really dark. Well, I'm not pressing too hard because I don't want it to be too dark. I'm going to press hard. And then as I get away from the front legs, I'm going to get lighter towards the end of his foot. Press lighter and lighter until it fades out. So right there, it looks darker and then out toward the end, it's lighter. So I'm going to repeat that same step over here, press a little harder towards his front leg and then as you get to the outside of his back leg, press lighter and lighter. And there's a little texture on, on his leg so you can go back over it with the same color, the same gray and smooth out that texture. I always love doing that, it's one of my favorite things, is to go back over with the same color and smooth it out. That look nice and soft now. Yeah. Then you can also use this black on top of the brown on the eucalyptus plant and add a little shadow to make it look like it's more 3D. These plants are going behind the koala. Is that cool? Yeah. With my white colored pencil, I went over the black eyes and also the nose and added a highlight after. Usually in all of our other lessons, we leave the white spot in there for the highlight, but you can also add it after with a white colored pencil. And one other thing I'm gonna do is I went over the gray line and I made it softer, softer with the white colored pencil. I'm gonna do that with the ear. So you can go over that hard line, the white pencil, and it will soften that line, make it look even fluffier. Is that cool? Yes. I love all these little tricks. Give me five, Hadley. You did awesome on coloring your cute little koala. Did you have fun? Yes. Do you think it looks better all colored in? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I hope our art friends are gonna pause the video right now to match the same color. Now we use a 50% cool gray for the fur on our koala. We use pink on the cheeks, we use sienna brown for the sticks, and spring green for the leaves. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your koala. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun, and we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, parents and teachers, did you know that we have an app now? For a small monthly price, you can get access to all of our lessons in a safe, distraction-free environment. Just visit artforkidshub.tv to learn more.